All right, so now we're going to go ahead and prepare our Django project to be deployed on App Platform. That is actually getting it live in production on DigitalOcean's App Platform. Now, this post right here is meant to be a reference guide. I will update it from time to time, so be sure to check that out when you need to. But in this video, we're going to be doing some things that are a little bit different than this guide. In fact, we've already done some things that are in this guide as well. So if you scroll down a bit, the key here is creating a runtime.txt, updating requirements, and then updating a few database ready environment variables, right? And so we just learned about environment variables, so this should not be really that surprising to you. So let's go ahead and tackle some of the easy ones. Now the first two are in requirements.txt. So inside of requirements.txt, we already have Django dash dot emv now what i want is g unicorn and a postgres binary that will make it really easy for django to actually connect to postgres databases g unicorn is a production grade web server now if we actually run python manage.py run server we will see that this is a development grade web server g unicorn is almost the exact same thing but made for production. It actually handles a server much better, not just on Django, but on many Python web applications. So it's a really, really useful package in that sense. And that's also true with this Postgres package as well. Now I would imagine this one right here is probably going to change over time as Postgres gets some new updates. So be sure to check the docs for that one. Uh, but that's really the baseline requirements. This Django-.emv is certainly not required for production. It's required for a project here, but not for production, which is why this says it must at least contain these three things. Uh, but of course, you will have other requirements as you start to build out your project more. Anyway, next is runtime.txt. Now, what this is, is a file that's going to live right next to requirements.txt, and it's going to tell app platform what python version we want to use so if we don't declare it it's going to default to the python version it wants which might be python 3.9.3 something like that but what we want is python 3.6.8 i'm going to leave it in as a 0.8 at this point now the blog post says 0.13 but the reason i'm leaving it in at 0.8 will become very clear when we actually deploy this in production Hint, it's going to tell us what version to use. Anyways, so let's go ahead and go to the next part. Updating settings.py. Now, in the last one, we already did this debug thing. We did this allowed host thing, roughly speaking the same. But I'm actually going to change to being the exact same environment variables. That way, we don't have any issues um, using these guides. So inside of allowed hosts, I want to use the Django allowed host environment variable instead, which also means that my .emv We'll have that as well. Next, what I want is the Django secret key in here instead of just simply secret key. And we'll go ahead and do that on both places, .emv and settings.py. Now, how do we actually create one of these secret keys would be a good question. Now, the blog post itself has a way to do it. It's right underneath this. You can just copy this string right here and you can run it. So it's Python command. It's going to import a management utility to get that random string and then it's gonna go ahead and print it out for us. So we could do this over and over. And this is actually really good because then I can use this inside of any sort of environment variable password that I might need or really any password that we might need. This is actually a pretty good way to generate those passwords. Another way that I use from time to time, which is maybe not as good, is UUID. So you can create UUID.UID for you can actually create passwords this way as well. But the reason it's not as good is because there's not as many special characters in there. So uh, maybe a little bit easier to crack. I don't know. I'm not that good at cryptography. So if you are, please let me know which one would be preferred. Now let's go ahead and go ahead and run that server again. And of course, everything should work just fine still, right? I just changed the keys of the environment variables, not a whole lot else. Next is all this Postgres SQL settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this and I'm gonna put it right below the Django database settings right here and I'll explain each one line by line. 
Okay, so hopefully these are pretty obvious. These five settings are environment variables related to the database, as in the database name. This is gonna be the user password. Uh, this is the Postgres database user password. This is gonna be, of course, the user name or the Postgres username. Nothing related to Django here. This is only the database stuff. This is gonna be the database host and then the database port, the actual port that it is available on, on the hosting machine. That's it, that's what those keys are. This next one, Postgres ready, is really just checking if the environment has all of those things. If it does not have all of those things, it will not be considered ready and therefore will not trigger this, right? So in my current development environment, I don't have any of those things. I'm probably not going to have any of those things for the remainder of this series, only in production. Now, the big caveat about databases is it's better to use the same database locally as when you go into production. Now, we're doing beginner tutorial, right? So this is all brand new stuff. So we can absolutely still learn everything we need to from just SQLite 3. There are some features that Postgres has that SQLite 3 does not, but for what we're doing, it really doesn't matter which one we use. I just wanted to tell you that because a lot of tutorials should tell you that, but also when you become a professional developer, hopefully that is part of your goal or at least some part of your major work, you're gonna to wanna to make sure these two databases are the same, your development environment and your production environment. Okay, cool. So that's pretty much all we need to do to prepare this to deploy. So now the big question is how to deploy well, of course, if you know version control or specifically Git, so Git itself is a version control system. If you know how to do this, you can absolutely use Git right now and jump to the deploy to DigitalOcean, either blog post or video, right? Both are gonna be covering things very similarly. Now, if you don't know Git, you have to learn this. I'm gonna do a quick like introduction to it in the next one but there are so many facets to Git that it might be a little daunting. So in the next one, I just wanna show you some of the absolute basics of it so you can really just understand Git so that we can actually deploy our code to GitHub and then go into production. But even if you don't learn Git and you completely wanna skip that next video, what we're actually gonna do when we go into production is fork my code. So you're gonna actually copy my code and use my actual code, not code that you are using, at least in the video. So it will show you how to deploy your code once you figure out Git is kind of the point. One video to learn all of Git is probably not enough, but it will at least get you some of the fundamentals down so you can actually deploy this. So let's go ahead and take a look at that.